or with uh, John? And you're talking about like statistics and mathematics and, and people. And I'm like, I don't even know what some of these words mean. I'm going to have to go look them up. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know. What, like, I can't even theoretically put it in a box where it, with other things that I know. I'm like, it, it could be cheese for all I know. <laughs> <laughs> Which is an interesting experience because it's just adding more to the things that I know I don't know. Because these were things I didn't even know I didn't know because... I didn't even know they existed. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm like, more things I don't know. Now I'm never going to catch up ever again. <laughs> now, I haven't been done um, many things, but I have been thinking uh, about quite a few things, especially about uh, processes uh, and how we deliver. And Because it's, it's hard to combine. I mean, uh, for, for if, if we try to push a uh, methodology so hard, uh, we can... Uh, kill the spontaneity that we have and this is not something that uh, I think that we should be doing but also if not uh, it will be ending being cow so I was trying to figure out how to do that there is a balance if if we can only understand how ants do this in their colonies that would be the, the game changer I actually, I have an entomologist expert who's in my kind of circle of people who I'm going to be having a conversation with to explain what we do and to wow. find a little bit more around that. For, for those that don't know who an, an entologist is, that's actually people that study ants. Uh, entologist with A or with E? Uh, entomologist with an E. Oh, okay. For people that are watching this call, they're probably like, what is going on? Entomology is the study of insects, not just ants. Yeah. Oh, thank you for correcting. Study of the whole insect family. I only know that from bones. <laughs> and the book because there's always an, and I studied forensics so they kind of an entomology is connected with the digestion and breakdown of bodies and what and how different bugs interact with a broken that body that's the only reason I know that but I don't yeah. know any more than they study books nice all right oh, you're so in trouble I've put on my reading glasses in order to scrutinize you more closely <laughs> Um, so I think we we have 26 people here, and I think we should be good to start. Uh, I have some weird noise on the street. I hope it's not too bad. So um, here's the thing: like this is probably our first like serious call uh, after the post submission madness, and there's a lot of stuff that is going on. And obviously, like we're kind of lost in terms of directions that we should be taking. And I'm saying directions because there are many in different uh, ways. And our core goal right now and core uh, mission as organization has to be centered around the Kegel, uh, second Kegel submission, because that is kind of, again, some structure for us to operate with. And we, even though we already have much bigger visions, like the discovery engine and all these amazing things that we talked about, we still have to be mindful about what are we producing for the Kaggle challenge and also question ourselves, is Kaggle challenge the best framework for, for us to operate within? Because I think we're putting too much faith into the fact that, you know, we've produced a submission and then there's going to be some magical feedback coming to us from, from Kaggle. But in reality, they're as confused as we are in, in many ways. So they may have different you know, channels of communications with you know, White, White House, AI2, and World Health Organization. But from our conversations with those entities, like everyone is confused. So we're basically operating in extreme uncertainty in environment. And our best bet is actually reducing that uh, in uncertainty through some, um, you know, decomposition of things that we're working on. So as a way to deal with that, and I hope I didn't introduce too much complexity at, the, at this point, and it still makes sense. But my general idea is kind of like we have this hierarchy of different things that we want to reach. 
and I tried to put it in the, into today's agenda. And I'll start from the top one. And even though there are even bigger ones, you know, we've, we've talked a lot about the, the change of the current world, how society operates, you know, all of these amazing things. Like we, we can't allow to, to be working on something like that in, in terms of the scale right now. So the closest we can be thinking about operating is actually this Discovery Engine Foundation. And what it implies, and who knows what that is. Like at this point, we have no idea. But um, that implies that there is something uh, that we can for further decompose as a product for very specific audience. And we've been fortunate enough to have very productive weekend and somehow, uh, you know, getting to this realization that there is, a, there is a specific persona that we should be targeting. And that specific persona is an infectious disease epidemiologist. So we are trying to build an AI powered literature review tool to be used by infectious disease epidemiologists. And assumptions that we're having is A, that it will produce the most impact and usefulness to the current COVID-19 pandemic. The second assumption that we're taking is the fact that it will be possible to integrate these people into our community and get you know, some form of um, validation of this idea because obviously if we're not able to bring you know, at least one, like we can't create this product. Like we can't uh, operate on, on the hypothesis of questionable uh, usefulness and utility of whatever we produce there has to be this validation step for us. And this validation may happen through different forms, you know, even jumping on a call with the person or having him write up a couple of sentences to guide us into the right direction. Like whatever it is, like we have to assume that it's possible until we learn it's not. And I hope we like reach that, um, you know, communication channel or something that will enable us to validate it quicker. So as a part of that, um, and maybe that's a good point to kind of um, indicate that the, the product, and look, repeat myself again, the product that we're building that is actually applicable for the Kaggle uh, submission is this AI literature review. And this is something that Kaggle has attempted to produce through that contributions page. Basically, that's a a page that outlines the results of the um, crowdsourced uh, AI literature review tool. Right now, it's, you know, again, of questionable usefulness and utility, and we have to integrate more domain experts into validation of that, but that's the goal. So then we have to think about what do we have to actually have to be able to build that literature review tool. And through multiple different conversations within the search engine uh, team, the literature review uh, channel, and many others, including the call with the epidemiologist, or let, let's call it that, with the person who's a, who has experience in market research in pharmacology and comes from the epidemiology background, we, we understood that the, the key pieces that we have to build for this literature review tool are first of all, being able to understand ontology of uh, the actual underlying data um, of the data set, the entities that exist there, and relationships between this unstructured data. So kind of like whether you're approaching risk factors uh, task or VT uh, vaccines and, and drugs one, like there is some ontology, there is some structure behind these tasks, be it, um, you know, groups of uh, different risk factors or, you know, the, the clusters of similar um, the comorbidities, things like that. And the beauty of our current creative redundancy is the fact that we actually are able to kind of creatively explore different ways of producing this ontology, entities and relationships by focusing on very specific um, sub niche. So, and we've seen that in a form, the risk factors team was able to, pro to produce some of that ontology in terms of the, you know, the list of all potential risk factors, the, the list of engrams that kind of outline the 
the ontology uh, in in a different way, but that's basically the first stab at, at those relationships and uh, the underlying entities in there. And uh, for example, VT team was able to produce the list of drugs, which is essentially uh, one piece of this ontology. Like there is an entity which is a drug and they've uh, built a system to efficiently extract that and uh, showcase some relevancy to, to the papers. Um, transmission team has completely different structure, different ontology, and they actually are focused on more like quantitative data and extraction of transmission uh, incubation periods and various other types of ranges. So here we have the beauty of the fact that these things are both similar in terms of the, the goals, similar in terms of the, um, you know, something that we need to build up as a foundation, but different enough to produce this creative redundancy. So that's kind of like the, the third level of, of this structure, the, this hierarchy. But for, for us to be able to supply these three teams, the, uh, the risk factors team, BT team, and the uh, transmission team, we have to give them this kind of the foundation, the infrastructure, something that Brendan has been building for like two weeks uh, before the submission, basically enriching the data set, making it easier to, to search for things, uh, having the name entity recognition column, the U UMLS column, all of these things are basically infrastructure for the three teams to experiment, fine tune, you know, try BIRD or LDA or anything else to find and uncover that uh, knowledge, that information that is hidden in unstructured data. So for that to happen, the crucial, the last uh, piece that I outlined is the actual data pre-processing and enrichment. Something that enables that unstructured data to be transformed into structured information. And that's probably like the, the deepest, uh, like the, the most, um, the most detail oriented piece, because essentially we have to build things like, you know, extractors of geolocation from the papers. We have to build extractors of um, like normalizers of like UMLS stuff and basically supply teams with all of that already baked into the data set and kind of the environment for them to experiment and uh, figure out which type of, you know, NLP technique or, um, you know, ML method works. So that's kind of my brain dump. Hopefully, like at least some of it is understood and maybe, maybe I'm, I'm right in certain assumptions in the fact that that's how we should be approaching this as, as a short term problem. So now I'll, I'll shut up and let you guys uh, say what you think. It, it seems to me like maybe one piece that's a key part of as we gear up for this round two submission as well is these redundancies like we talked about, they've been good between the different teams, but for us to start to do a little bit of a debrief and assessment of what are the things that have been working well for each of the different teams, what's the code that's most uh, replicable or, or can be used in other places and to really kind of gear that up so we have our Lego blocks in a good order for us to be able to build something solid with them for the second round. So it feels like that's just a, a piece of that digestion and assessment from round one that, that'll, that'll help us move faster and better into round two. Um, so Arthur, does that mean that anything that isn't related directly to the three tasks uh, should that be whittled off into something that either spent less time on or breaks off for a while? Good question. Or do you want all of that to be within the... So, spectrum? yeah, good question. And thank you for bringing that up. I do think that, you know, as a highly collaborative effort, it would be nice if, you know, maximum amount of people would be helping us to build up this foundation, mostly because that will be a faster way to converge to infrastructure to enable other types of applications and other things to emerge way faster. So to give you an example, 
let's say that you want to experiment with that, um, you know, uh, a, a tool that will help researchers identify some patterns in, in a data, right? Uh, for you to accomplish that task, you have to build out all the infrastructure, first for data set management, then for, you know, enriching the data set and other things. And it's almost impossible for you to build out that infrastructure unless you find probably like 10, 15 people to join you, which is a task of its own. So essentially what we're trying to accomplish is build this ultimate like tool for you to be able to jump into this, let's say in a month from now or in two weeks from now and be better equipped to execute on any idea that is beyond Kaggle challenge. Does it answer your question? Yes, thank you. So one key question that I have is like, I think the focus on like one deliverable is gonna help bring a lot of clarity. My question is what happens when Kaggle stops updating the data set? So if we wanna exist beyond and outside of Kaggle, do we need a work stream now that is actually sourcing that data set that we're otherwise starting with. And that's what, what we meant by this data processing and enrichment. Okay. Uh, Slava, who's not sure if he's on a call, but this uh, guy who amazingly put up the datasets.coronali.org, which is essentially um, a mechanism for us to start producing data sets of our own and encourage other people to participate. So we become this centralized space but or like decentralized uh, space for all other data sources and the beauty of it is like we are not locked into any like corporate limitations or like limitations of um, not being able to share any data or not being able to share any code base that was or is used for for this process the limitation of Kaggle is the fact that it relies on AI2 that is producing the data set. And unfortunately, they have um, a number of limitations uh, that we've uncovered during our call with them a couple of days ago. And those are well understood, um, but they are just you know, the realities of our world. The good thing that AI2 has that we don't have is the actual relationships with the publishers that are still very um, unmotivated to share uh, scientific papers. As ridiculous as it sounds, like we are living in a pandemic and there are organizations that are not willing to, to share that data. And the only way they, they're sharing it is through Accord 19. And even that cannot be, for example, packaged into PDFs. It has to exist in, in the form that it exists now. Okay. Um, that's really helpful. I misunderstood the data set work. I thought it was starting with what Kaggle provided. I didn't realize we were already building the structure to exist independent of that. Yeah, I'll, I'll maybe toss out there, and Arthur, I'm interested in kind of your feedback on it. Um, is I know we've talked about kind of that Bell Labs model a little bit as something that seems like it's a good fit for the, for the nature of the organization that we have. And I, I, to devil's advocate, I would say it seems like we want to be consolidating as much resources as we can up to the point of functional optimization towards that Kaggle 2 submission. But I think that with, again, with 900 people and a lot of people who aren't necessarily knowing how to engage. It's I impossible. That having some of those side tests and other pieces moving along, as long as it's not at the expense of that round two submission, isn't a bad thing because it can also start getting those people enculturated into how we're doing things here and starting to, to, to work on some of those team pieces. The other piece that may be useful with it is cross-pollination, um, where we may have people who are working on something totally different over here, and all of a sudden, there's some insights from that that can kind of get plugged in. So I think, I think we're 100% in line with the round two, like that's the focus, that's the, the, the focus. And it's just a matter of how exclusively do we gear all the energy towards that. Yeah, and it's, it becomes an optimization function, like multi-dimensional, multi-variable optimization function. And in reality, like I would encourage everyone to be working on whatever they think is useful while thinking about the fact that their time is limited. Their, you know, uh, let's not be philosophical, 
they call it, but your life is limited. And, you know, it's, it's really a question of where you dedicate your efforts and what's the actual impact of, of those. If it's useful at some point, I have a suggestion around a pro like a proposal forming technique that we can use that is, is coming from an engineering kind of a world. So for any of the things when we make decisions like that, we're not just coming up with here's what our decision is around it, but we're looking at like, here's what the goal is, here's the factors involved in whatever decision we come up with, here's the decision, here's the metrics we're going to use to figure out if that decision actually worked well, and then here's when we come back to kind of address that again. It sounds, it sounds like it's a lot of bureaucratic red tape. But it's the kind of stuff that as we move forward and get more complicated, I think can help us parcel out and actually learn from the experiments that we're doing. That's it for me. Can I suggest uh, some, some idea? Uh, I uh, think we are uh, uh, about this paper before uh, for our uh, scientific. Uh, I, I suggest uh, to keep uh, our efforts in, and the uh, deficits uh, keeps. Uh, can we uh, publish paper uh, for this event? Uh, you're muted, Arthur. Can, can we publish a scientific paper uh, or research paper uh, for, for our efforts instead of projects only? Can we publish a uh, paper based on the research we've done? Or? It sounds like you're saying so not just in terms of the results that we're doing, but in terms of other aspects of, of sort of what we're doing and how we're doing it. Is that right, Fatma, that publishing papers on that? Fatma? I think you're muted. You're muted right now, Fatma. Sorry, Daniel. Sorry, we can Daniel. hear you now. Uh, I suggest, um, uh, uh, what about uh, your mind about um, uh, how can we uh, organize our teams to publish paper instead of uh, projects on to publish scientific paper? How we can organize our teams to be able to produce scientific paper based on the work and methodology? Yes. Yeah, I think that's a very good idea. I think both here also suggested that and has some even framework and kind of a travel card that explains for us how to do it. I think that, you know, even though that sounds like a great idea, I'm not sure we have people that are able to pull that off and, and make it happen, unless you would be able to do that. Um, it's in the in the chat, I put the the Trello card uh, for the for the Fatma Fatma speak. Yes, uh, in the in the chat, I put the the Trello card about the scientific paper. Just uh, the only people uh, in this moment is me. I am uh, organ uh, join the information in one uh, Git and um, Git card repository, and. I think that in this week, I, I can call more people for work in that. Wow. Sounds good. You, uh, we, we have that uh, yes. structure. I would recommend Fatma connecting with you, Boris, on Slack. Okay. And yeah, mm. that would be great. Yes, uh, it's probably that the paper is 18 page because we need to reduce the page, uh, I don't know, in 20, 30. Okay. The problem mm -hmm. is uh, in this moment we have a big information and we need a little yes. paper. Yeah. Yes. Anton? So go going towards like this academia path, I actually like this idea a lot, uh, but I definitely like kind of supporting Artur ideas that not show that we are like ready to be as this like coronavirus organization to be behind this but in terms of individuals like writing papers out of you know findings within coronavirus i think it's a good start and great path forward for us also just to kind of put our brand name of this community forward and at some point again who knows maybe we'll be kind of like affiliated with coronavirus is enough to get into some good, you know, conference or something. So if, if anybody is interested in going in that direction, uh, it's definitely worth to start thinking even right now. So thank F uh, Fatma and Boris to bring this up. 
Perfect. All right. So um, I feel that there was um, a lot of silence after my brain dump. Um, if, if you guys have questions and maybe you'll take some time to process that information, but I highly encourage everyone to speak up and just say if they have no clue what, what I was talking about or if there is a way for me to describe it better. So I, I actually have some questions. So based on like the, uh, the current thinking on the digital for the whole team, how would you suggest the teams, the uh, vertical teams to uh, proceed? Like, uh, do we do just continue whatever we've started or we kind of try to integrate with the, the larger acre? So I think you should be proceeding in the same vein as you were before. And the reason why is this kind of the, the, uh, the fact that you already know what the output of the literature, literature review looks like in terms of usefulness is the best thing that exists right now within our organization. The fact that I was working in the risk factors team and I'm able to go and assess any other search engine tool out there and be able to say, hey, like the results don't make any sense. This is enough value to keep pushing forward the, the actual, you know, task risk factors, task VT, ta task transmission. And that's just my observation based on the mm -hmm. fact that, you know, we stumble upon these amazing <clears throat> tools that look so beautiful and they look amazing. But once you start digging into it, and for example, you type in heart risk factors, um, heart disease risk factors, and you see pregnancy in there and you're like, and that's actually a good result. When you see some random result that doesn't make any sense, you start understanding like what is not working in there and what we have to improve. And even though we're far from understanding how to improve it, we at least have this empirical knowledge about how the usefulness looks like, which is a very important thing that we uh, should be thinking about outside of the actual like three teams in terms of creating a benchmark of what is a useful solution so you guys in inside the teams can kind of abstract away from the the focus on the data sets and work on tools fine-tune them and benchmark them against uh this kind of um something that defines usefulness which i think will be created with the use of epidemiologists uh hopefully this week does it make sense yeah, sure. Um, but I'm just thinking since like there's a whole new uh, initiative on the search engine or the knowledge graph. Um, it's just uh, so, so far, each team has its own search process. I'm just saying it might be a little like, are we thinking about just centralizing this search process with the new um, tools that we're actually building and so that the teams can actually tap into the resource with the maybe better ontology entity relations from the new system, instead yeah. of we just experiment with our own little you know, search engines. Yeah, and maybe I'm not explaining that right, and maybe that's also colliding with the fact that your, um, your approach and methodology of uh, solving the transmission task is very much search engine-like. Um, and it's, it's different than the risk factors one. And I think it's different than the, uh, VT team one. And that's why you have the maximum kind of, uh, relevancy to the work of the search engine team, which is essentially an NLP team that is trying to create, um, some infrastructure for this discovery engine. So to, to kind of connect the dots from what I think you should be focusing on as as a person that did the most work on the search engine stuff you should work closely with the search engine team to better understand mm -hmm. how to integrate um, that component into each of the tasks because you mm -hmm. so far have the <coughs> most uh, knowledge in that okay. sounds good to also add a little bit um, to Christine's point I think what what we both want or at least what I think like for VT's perspective, what we want is some sort of internal search engine so we can do even like preliminary exploration of new project ideas. Mm -hmm. And that's different than a whole external 
facing application with all the bells and whistles. Um, even just kind of like some basic semantic search sounds like it would be amazing for our teams internally. So I'm just not fully synced up with the search engines team of that kind of internal service exists or not, but uh, that's maybe what I think Christine would be also thinking. Yeah. Well, yeah, so to, to, yeah, to expand right. on this, essentially what, what we're doing is search engine is the guys start focusing on delivering some like bigger engine, right? And doing that process, they will then use task teams and whatever their needs are, right? As, as essentially kind of like go to like customers, like do customer development for that product. But in terms of what, what that just brought up, essentially each team are free to experiment on their own. And it is actually good that we will have this dedicated experiments for specific like tasks, because all of that knowledge could be also then incorporated to a bigger search engine. So in terms of process itself, not much, but I think like not that much is changing from the round one, right? Teams are still independent, still could like are free to experiment with the approaches, et cetera. It just now, with the kind of this aggregating some of the findings and efforts from round one, we'll have you know much more, much more resources for teams to tap into, in, in that you know in, in their workflow, if it makes sense. Also, um, another like housekeeping point uh, goes back to the initial question that Christine brought up. Like, so what what are the teams like, like in which direction should should they be? moving, et cetera, I, I agree with Arthur, it should be the same direction, but this is the right time to just reflect on round one and just see what worked, what didn't, what structural changes should be done there. I think I just saw a message that this Geo team, like Daniel is stepping out of like leadership role because of the like time constraints and Manuel is the you know, leader now. So something like this is also like probably a good idea to do like, like this week. If you saw that something is not working right or commitment of people who are like very active round one, you know, is not sustainable on that level or, you know, more people kind of get to the table, et cetera, probably it's a good idea to, to look into the, like the structure of the team itself. Yeah. And kind of treating the, the fact that since the very beginning, we place this assumption that we don't, depend on any uh, specific individual and this kind of emergent structure like we've experimented with it multiple times we just throw in the document into a channel then I come back to it and it's filled out and I, I didn't depend on making sure that was Tyler or that was Anson or that was Mark like whoever was available was able to fill that in and that's the beauty of uh, creating structure that guidance that quest in you know game, gamification terms for us to be able to fill in uh, that need with relevant resources and we're we're also as a part of round two we're actually dedicating resources to expanding our kind of internal toolkit to be able to match the tasks to relevant uh, people and the amazing work that uh, Andrea is doing with the uh, anonymous roaster, roaster of skills, I'm going to quickly share the screen just to showcase that, is basically a starting point. So we have all the skills of people that um, we have and we start clustering them uh, manually for now into general things like uh, deep learning, machine learning, and uh, data science and machine learning. So we're going to create a tool that will help you, team leaders or team members, to more efficiently um, source uh, the talent, assuming you create enough structure for this talent to operate with. Yeah, and I'll have a vastly improved version of that by the end of today, and then we can keep iterating on it. Yay. So yeah. I think, yeah, yeah I, I mean, was looking at it earlier, Andrea, and i has gone from like zero to sixty in complexity already. I'm like, wow, this has got really clever really quick. Well, yeah, people started adding a lot of different things. I'm gonna, I'll probably like put out a full replacement for it with a lot of other things, but I view most of you as kind of my user community. So like I'm soliciting kind of user stories of like, from your perspective, like what would you need a skills matching engine to be able to supply? Um, and then we'll iterate on that. 
Yeah, and it's it's a common understanding that the spreadsheet is just a starting point. That's just yeah. a way for us to to navigate this madness. But once we get some structure in place, it it may as well become this you know interconnector service with the UI and and some something that makes more sense. But this is a it'll, starting. It'll probably point. end up it'll probably end up as a page on the website, <laughs> like everything else, <laughs> just just to be able to work, even if it just stays as with an filters. internal system. Yeah. yeah, we have filters and systems because Andrea's building out the logic of it. Now we just then we'll once that's somewhere like, then we'll have a logic structure and categories and how it works. And then yeah, hopefully someone from data vis will turn up and turn that into a system that works. And then someone from will turn it into an, an app that will go onto our website. And then we'll have a thing that people will be able to use. But yeah, I'll put some forward, Andrea, because I think I'll be using it a lot. The user user stories that is. Yeah. Okay, so I think it will be good to actually go through the teams real quick, just to get a general sense of the, the current state and what you guys need help with. So we're gonna start with Risk Factors team. Maya, are you here on the call? Mm, no, is there... Um, let's start from vaccines, then Sosa. Uh, hi, everybody. So updates. Um, we sent out a brainstorming form to collect ideas. We got a lot of good responses. So today at our call, we're going to discuss everything. That's going to be great. And then besides that, uh, we're also trying to figure out like best structure and best coding practices. So we're just more organized and we're not in like super agile mode like we were for round one, but we're more in like kind of a polished, you know, a high quality, interoperable, more production-ish kind of mode for round two. So I'm chatting with a few people, Anton, Slava, to try to figure out what's what, how we can do that well going forward. No blockers. Perfect. Dan, if you need help or feedback with that, uh, please don't hesitate to contact me, please. Yeah, I'm hope I'm I'm excited for that call that we all have, and your feedback is going to be super important. What call? Um, I'm scheduling a call with Manuel, Slava, uh, Anton, Shannon, just to talk about like infrastructure for the GitHub Got repo it. and stuff. Makes sense. All right. Um, next team, Christine, transmission. Um. So hi everyone. Uh, we're just kind of taking a break during the weekend and haven't really started anything new but given that like the new um, sort of team-wide initiative I think we need a little thinking on how we can integrate our current work and then maybe use take advantage of uh, what you're building what other people are building and then improve upon well, our approach and maybe we can uh, also create some task groups to support it or kind of just uh, work with the sort of the, the discovery uh, engine initiative to sort of for, for our deliverable, but also kind of work together to for that goal. Sounds great. Uh, do you need any uh, specific types of people to join your team? Right, so that's what uh, I think we need some time thinking. I think we need a little uh, restructuring of our teams on uh, what we want to accomplish in round two, and then and we will think about what um, talents we need to uh, to work on those tasks. And maybe it will be great for Tyler to, as you will be fulfilling the mm -hmm. needs, to actually uh, help these teams figure out the the basic structure. Like from my observation, there are very specific patterns. For example, um, if there is and if there is an LP involved in each of these tasks, it would be great to have some you know skill time zone redundancy for each mm -hmm. specific aspect. So for example, if um, you need like general NLP talent, you should have three people that are um, able to to help with that across different mm -hmm. time zones. So kind of wrapping your head around that redundancy and maybe Tyler, you, you could spend some time creating something that would help that. Yeah, that would be great. Okay, um, I think Thank Maya you. joined us. Yep, I'm here. All right, so we're just doing quick 
report on uh, like what, what the teams need and like how we can best support them. Uh, <clears throat> okay, so uh, uh, we basically started to understand the methodology we should proceed with. Uh, what actually the main need at the moment is to push the collection of responses from a domain expert to the uh, the answer posted in general channel and an expert channel. We really need to collect responses on that. That is super crucial for us to proceed. And uh, the rest we are kind of figuring out uh, ourselves. Uh, I've just had a very productive call with Lucas. Uh, so uh, we kind of have uh, nicely outlined a uh, integration, pretty seamless integration with the search engine team, which is kind of cool. And we also understand the scope of our work for at least the next week. And it's huge, but it's going to be fine. That's, that's awesome. Uh, do you need any type of uh, specific people on your team? Uh, listen, first of all, we are going to deal, because I'm also influenced by Slava and his amazingness. Uh, we want we to all are. build... <laughs> yeah, indeed. So we understand that we need to build dictionary and anthology, first of all. The dictionary and relation between terms, and then find relations that extract the most relevant things based on topic modeling that we have already as a first test step, okay? And then we will pass it kind of further to a search engine team for them to understand our successful and failing practices and build the similarities based on that. That's how we agreed to proceed. Now, that things like anthology and dictionaries, it's not something self-obvious that you can make without actually kind of having an, a, an expert from that field, someone like Slava. But Slava is a pretty busy person. And if like there is someone who can kind of give us an overview and an ideas and talk to us like two kids, because we are kind of, we don't really understand what, what we are talking about, okay? That would be absolutely lovely. Yeah, I think as we're approaching more and more complex subjects, we're we're becoming those kids more and more. And like every time I, I listen to Slava talking or writing something, or that John Urbanic guy writing something, it, I also feel like a kid. So that's completely expected for, for all of us. Uh, no, I, I, I'm not worried. It's okay. Yeah. It's okay. But I just need these smarter people to kind of, you know, help me to navigate through the forest yep 100 percent. all right so that sounds great um questionary, questionary okay mm -hmm. and dictionary slash ontology expert that's i will also post it in needs channel yep that's a good a great summary and i think i don't even i don't even know what i need to look for for that so i'm gonna need someone to help me to even work out how to look for something with its own with that very descriptive but non-descriptive way of t explaining something. I think I might need to talk to Slava just to be able to understand what yeah. we're going to need. Yeah, Maya, de put it in detail in the needs channel and um, I'm doing the updated skills analysis right now. Okay, that's amazing. Thank you so much. That's going to be a good uh, validation for, for the skill set uh, thing. All right, so um, I would like to also um, obviously, we won't have much time to go through details, but if there is, um, uh, well, there is Manuel that could talk about the Geo stuff, but I think you already mentioned how he's integrating with various teams. Uh, right, Manuel? Excuse me, can you repeat the question? Uh, you're kind of already integrating with various teams and figuring out what's the best way to, to proceed for your team. Yes, mostly or, uh, well, the, the, the only th new thing we have is that Ishan uh, reported that yesterday they finished the geolocation of papers using the metadata with an 80% uh, match rate, which I think is quite great. Wow. Uh, and we will, well, I've been discussing a little with Iberson and Daniel on how to better organize ourselves and how to better deliver to the other teams. And we'll just start implementing uh, what we decide uh, soon. And we hope to Manuel, get I'll, be, 
I'll be happy to have a fruitful conversation with you because I believe that in this stage, we also should kind of combine our efforts with what you are doing to make more seamless and more organic integration. Uh, for sure. And also, as a side note, uh, I told you that I got one cousin that is uh, working as an neurologist in a Seattle hospital. Uh, she passed her colleagues the work that we submitted to Kaggle, and they are reviewing it, and she will collect all the feedback that she gets, so I will pass it back to you. And also, she told me that they have... Um, where there are research papers based on laboratory, ways to specify the level of evidence that they have. And this is something that if it's not already, I don't know, uh, we could add to the core uh, 19 specific uh, task forces. Yeah, and I think it's missing and that's crucial part, uh, part of that pre-processing and enrichment of data set. Yeah. So, well, uh, once I got uh, that, uh, I will pass it to all the other teams. Sounds great. All right. So, and do we have anyone from the search engine team, the NLP team, kind of give us a, a brief of their point of view? As I understand, they are all in a call I've been to. <laughs> oh, okay. Makes sense. All right. Uh, so then uh, we'll probably wrap it up unless someone, uh, anyone has any questions or um, confused, just let us know. I, I have um, a suggestion. Like if we can have some kind of a tight, uh, tighter schedule for a call, that would have been amazing. Because for example, uh, some parts are extremely relevant, some parts are less relevant. And at the end, it's, it, it turns out to be a pretty long call. We are almost an hour on a call at the moment. Uh, yeah. And if we can kind of structure it and kind of help us to navigate which piece is more relevant for us, which piece is less, and when can we connect, that would be lovely at this stage. Yeah, kind of It's a huge jumping, volume of information. Yeah, jumping into the right sections of the calls. That's what you're referring to. And I agree. The reason why this one is so long is because we haven't had one uh, in a couple of days that is really like serious. So yeah, hopefully we'll, we'll improve on that. All right, sounds good, guys. Uh, quick, quick question, Go ahead. sorry. Um, could we also, a suggestion, could we also have all the like horizontal teams report, like the leaders of the horizontal teams to talk about what they're thinking, et cetera, not just the vertical teams? I, I think, think we just did that. Or yeah. yeah, so just like for all horizontal teams that exist, I think that'd be awesome. Yeah, so I listed out the data sets. We don't have anyone from that uh, team right now. Uh, NLP, they're having a call. And uh, Geo team, we have had manual. Um, we can have other sub teams, but I think those are three core ones, data sets, geo and NLP. Gotcha. And maybe search engine. Yeah. That, that's what I mean by NLP team, but because it, it was kind of NLP team, but then it transformed into search engine one. Oh, I see. All right. Cool. Okay. All right. Sounds good guys. Thanks everyone. Again, there is a lot so much. uncertainty, but we'll, we'll get through it. All right. Thank you, guys. Bye. Bye.